Hi, welcome to another Talking Treasures episode. I'm Olivia Beavers, the Assistant Curator of Natural Science at the Potteries Museum and Art Gallery. And today I'm going to be talking about the Watkin Collection, which is a collection of fossils that was donated by Edward or Ted Watkin. So let's go have a look in the store. Edward Watkin is a notable member of the North Staffordshire Field Club and the North Staffordshire Group of the Geologists Association. Uh, Ted was born in, in Stoke-on-Trent and worked in the ceramics industry and in his spare time he collected fossils, minerals, postcards and stamps. And after Ted sadly passed away in 2014, he thoughtfully left his geological and archaeological uh, collections to the Potteries Museum and Art Gallery. So we have approximately 2,000 fossils uh, in the collection and they've been collected from all over the UK. Um, and within the collections are a range of objects from aminoids to graptolites, echinoids, brachiopods and many other things. And today I have a handful of my favourite objects which are the trilobites. Trilobites were living around 521 million years ago to 252 million years ago and they were symmetrical animals and are part of the arthropods which are animals that have an exoskeleton, a segmented body and paired jointed appendages and other animals in this group include spiders, dragonflies, crabs and millipedes. Um, all the trilobites lived in um, marine environments, so in salt water and uh, trilobites were mainly made up of calcite and have three specialised regions called tagmata and these were the cephalon, the thorax and the pygidium and they were also split longitudinally into the pleural, the axial and the another pleural lobe um, and that's three lobes which is where their name comes from, the trilobites. Um, so the cephalon consists of a raised area called the glabella and the eyes and a cephalic suture um, which allowed it to molt. So in order to grow, the trilobites would shed the exoskeleton along these um, suture lines. And then we have the thorax, which is the middle section. And this contained a lot of segments and allowed the trilobite to bend and curl. And they evolved over time to be able to curl up into a ball when stressed or to avoid predators and defend themselves. The pygidium is the tail end and the segments here are usually fused together as you can see and the size of the pygidium again varies from around 1 to 30 segments. The trilobites were a successful and diverse group of animals which could be broadly grouped into burrowers, swimmers and crawlers and their morphology which is basically how they looked determined their different modes of life. Their eyes were compound, which means that they were formed from many different um, lenses and each lens was a calcite crystal and most species had a type of eye that, that had up to 15,000 calcite lenses per eye. The trilobite's mode of life had an impact as to what type of eyes it had. For example, free swimming trilobites um, had a very streamlined body and had very large eyes so that they had 360 degree vision and uh, this was to allow them to see predators from below, above and all around. Some species that moved on the uh, sea floor had their eyes on stalks to avoid obstacles that came out of the sea floor and others had eyes which were reduced or non-existent because if you're living in deeper water where it's mainly dark and there's not much light available you don't really need to see and this brings us on to genal spines. Genal spines are present on a few of the specimens but as they are extremely delicate they aren't often preserved or they are partially broken but here you can see a really good example. There are debates as to what they were used for. Some suggest that they were quite flexible and used for steering whilst others believe that they were used for protection or to increase the ability to feel disturbances around them. But whatever the reasons, there are some very impressive examples that have been found in the trilobite world, which you can see here. So we hope you enjoyed the talk on the trilobites from the Watkin Collection. 
Don't forget to check out our social media channels and our website for more information.